Oh, yeah. But it's very nice to meet you all. It's very nice to see you all. Are you all, are you all enjoying lockdown? Give us a thumbs up yes. if you're enjoying lockdown. No, I... Cool. Give us a thumbs up if you're excited about going back to school. <laughs> you're excited about doing maths. <laughs> oh, hello. Mixed response. Uh, mixed response. Mixed response. <laughs> Put your hands up if you're if you're excited about going back to work. Some people are, yeah. some people are. <laughs> the Crixley family there are all tucked up in bed. If you're not in bed, there's a there's a set of dudes there. They look the coziest little family, all in bed with their duvets over them. Oh, how sweet! It's very nice to see you all. Hello, you're very welcome to our boat here. This is our boat, Hawker. You can't quite see Hawker. Uh, there she is. There's the, there's the living room. And uh, you join us here. Who's, who's clattering their, uh, their, their, their balls around? Who's clattering balls? Turn them off. Turn them off. All I can hear is balls clattering. So who's come for stories? Who's come for stories? Who's come for chocolate? Who's come for chocolate? Who's Who's come for beer? Right. My kids have come for beer as well. Happy <laughs> so, should we have a story to start off with? Yes, please. Thumbs up for a story. Yeah. Cool. And uh, I thought we could start off with a silly story. Would you like a silly story? Yeah. yeah. Now, give us a hands up if you're good at listening. Yeah, people are good. Uh, uh, can everyone go on mute? I'm being asked if people can go on mute because there's so much noise going on. It's all going... Oh, here we are there. You can hear me now. Cool. All right. Well, I thought I'd start you off with this story because what you need sometimes is you need a bit of a warm-up and you need to get your voice going, you see, and you need to get your tongue going. And I was thinking this morning about a story that gets my mind and my voice and my tongue moving. And uh, I thought of this old story. Now, I will warn you before I start, don't try and stop me in the middle of it, because if you do, it'll be a little bit like trying to stop a truck on the motorway. I'll do a somersault in midair if you try and stop me in the middle of this story. And uh, this story is a really old story, and I've had it in my head for quite a long time. And I'm telling it you because I enjoy telling it. And I do think sometimes if you enjoy telling a story, People often enjoy listening to a story. And it's one of those stories that once you, uh, once it's gone in, uh, it won't leave you. It haunts you, this story, like a ghost. So this story goes a little bit like this. Once upon a time, there were two very close friends. Now, one of those friends was called Manaka, and one of those friends was called Munaka. And Manaka and Munaka did everything together. But the thing that they loved doing more than anything else in the world was picking blackberries. And I'm sure you like blackberries too, don't you? Well, that's to say they didn't both enjoy picking blackberries. Manaka enjoyed picking blackberries. Munaka enjoyed eating blackberries. So every day when they went down to the hedgerow with a basket, Manaka would pick and Munaka would eat and pick and eat and pick and eat and pick and eat until the end of the day with Matt in the basket. Do you think there were any blackberries in the basket? No, I can see some shaky heads going on there. No, they weren't in the basket. They were all in Munaka's mouth and Munaka was munching them down and you could tell how many blackberries he ate because he had a great big wobbly belly. Well, on the day of this story, Manaka had put up with Munaka eating all the blackberries for so long that he was so angry, he decided he was going to get his revenge. He decided that today, and I don't want to shock you, but Manaka decided that today, Munaka should die. Now, that's not very nice, is it? Well, Manaka went running off to get the apparatus what he would need to put an end to Munaka. And eventually, 
he came to a copse of trees and he saw a tall rod standing there. And he thought, that's the very thing I need, you see. But because this is a story, everything can speak. And the rod looked at Manakar and said, hello, Manakar, what news today? And Manakar looked at the rod and said, well, it's my own news I'm seeking. I'm here to use you, the rod, to make a gad and hang Manakar for eating my blackberries, every one. Well, that's fine, said the rod. You can have the use of me, but you're going to have to go and get an axe to chop me down with. Well, Manakar scratched his head and then he remembered where the axe was. It was back in the yard at the house. So he ran as fast as he could back to the yard and he found the axe. But before he could pick it up, the axe looked up at him and said, Good morning, Manakar, what news? Well, Manakar looked down at the axe and he said, Well, it's my own news I'm seeking. I'm here to use you, the axe, to cut the rod, make a gad and hang Manakar for eating my blackberries, every one. Well, that's fine, said the axe. You can have the use of me, but the problem is, you see, I'm quite blunt. So you're going to have to take me over there to that wetting stone and sharpen me up. Right, said Monica. And he picked up the axe and he went over to the wetting stone. But when he arrived at the wetting stone, the wetting stone looked up at Manakar and said, Good morning, Manakar. What news today? He said, It's my own news I'm seeking. I'm here to use you, the wetting stone, to sharpen this axe so I can cut a rod, make a garden, hang Monakar for eating my blackberries, every one. Well, that's fine, said the wetting stone. You can have the use of me, but I'm a bit dry because I've been out in the morning sun. And so you'll have to go to the river and get some water to wet me, you see. Well, suddenly Manakar was wondering whether it was worth it all along, but he decided to persevere with his adventure and off he went down to the river. But when he arrived at the river, the river looked up at him in a lazy kind of way and said, Good morning, Manakar. What news today? Well, it's my own news I'm seeking, said Manakar. I'm here to beg you to give me a little bit of water so I can wet the wetting stone, sharpen the axe, cut a rod, make a gad and hang Manakar for eating my blackberries, every one. Well, that's fine, said the river, but I am quite lazy. And sometimes I need a little bit of encouragement. So what you'll have to do is go and get a deer to jump into me and so I can splash up some water and you can make the use of it. A deer, said Manaka. Well, where am I going to find one of them? But look was with him that day as he looked through the glade in the forest and he could see there was a deer chewing the morning grass. And so he ran towards the deer and the deer looked up and said, hello, Manaka, what news today? Manaka said, well, it's my own news I'm seeking. I'm here to beg you to jump inside the river so I can catch some water and carry it back to the wetting stone. I can sharpen the axe, cut a rod, make a gad and hang one a for eating my blackberries every one. Well, that's fine, said the deer, but I like the river. I'm quite lazy and I, I need some encouragement myself. So if you could find yourself a dog to chase me, I would be quite happy to jump inside the river. Well, Manaka scratched his head again and wondered where there would be a dog. But of course, he remembered that there was one back at the farmyard. And so he ran as quick as he could back to the farmyard. And there on the doorstep was the dog lying in the morning sun. And he lifted up his head and he said, good morning, Manaka. What news today? It's my own news I'm seeking, said Manaka. I'm here to beg you, the dog, to chase the deer so we'll jump in the river and the river will give me water and I can carry the water to the wetting stone and wet the stone and sharpen the axe and cut the rod and make a garden and hang Monica for eating my blackberries every one. Well, that's fine, said the dog, and I'm quite happy to help. But I've got a poorly paw and I need something to soften the hurt, you see. So if you could find something to pack the poorly paw of the hound, I'd be happy to oblige. Well, Monica. He had a hard task ahead of him. What to bandage the paw with when suddenly he looked through the pantry window and he could see upon the table there was a block of butter. And he thought, well, that's the perfect thing. And so he went inside the pantry and there was the butter and it saw him and said, good morning, Manaka, what news today? Well, the hound has hurt his paw. So I was hoping I could use a little bit of you to pack the poly paw of the hound. The hound will up and chase the deer. The deer will jump in the river and give me some water. I can use the water to wet the wetting stone, sharpen the axe, cut a rod and make a gad and hang Monica for eating my blackberries every one. Well, that's fine, said the butter, and I'm very happy to help. But I've just come out the fridge, so I'm a little bit hard, you see. So you'll have to find some kind of implement to scrape me with. 
But just at that moment, Manakar looked down and he could see that curled up by the side of the fire, there was a cat. And as he watched, the cat stood up and stretched like cats do. And he saw the cat's claws and he thought, well, that's the perfect thing. And the cat looked at Manakar and said, what news, Manakar? He said, I was hoping that maybe you could jump up on the top of this table and scratch some of the butter so I can pack the poorly paw of the hound. And the hound will up and chase the deer and the deer will jump into the river. He'll give me some water and I'll wet the wetting stone sharp and the axe, cut a rod, make a gad and hang Munakar for eating my blackberries every one. Well, that's fine, said the cat, but I've not had me milk this morning. So if you could go out into the yard and ask some of the cows to squeeze a drop into this saucer, I'd be very happy to oblige. Well, suddenly Manakar was thinking about going home and having a cup of tea. But he thought, I've come this far, so I should persevere. So we went outside to greet the cows who were chewing the cud, you see. Well, they had a mouth full of grass, but they managed to speak and say, Good morning, Manakar, what news? He said, well, I was hoping that maybe you could squeeze a drop of milk into this sauce and so I could feed it to the cat. And the cat would jump to the table and scratch the butter. I'll use the butter to pack the poorly paw of the hound. The hound will up and chase the deer. The deer will jump into the river. He'll splash me some water, which I'll wet the wetting stone. And sharpen the axe, cut a rod, make a garden, hang him on a car. for eating my blackberries, every one. Well, that's fine, said the cows. We're very happy to help. But we've only just started uh, to chew the cud, you see. But what speeds it up is a little bit of straw. Now, the threshers are in the th field, and if you could go down there and beg a little bit of straw from them, I'm sure it will speed up the process. Well, Manakar, he trudged down the lane to the field, and there were the threshers, but unfortunately, he'd mistimed it, because they were just, like some of you, sitting down to have their dinner. And they looked and said, hello, Manakar, what news today? He said, I beg of you. Would you give me a little bit of straw that I can feed to the cow? So the cow would work some milk and drop some into the saucer. I'll give it to the cat and the cat will jump onto the table and scratch the butter. I'll pack the poorly paw of the hound. The hound will up and chase the deer. The deer will jump into the river and splash me some water with which I'll wet the wet and stone, sharpen the axe, cut a rod, make a garden, hang one a car for eating me my blackberries every one. Well, that's fine, said the threshers. But as we say, we're just about sitting down to have our lunch. Now, mind, we've not got any pudding. So if you could go down to the miller's house and ask him for the makings of a cake, we'd be very happy to oblige. Well, the story's nearly at an end, my friends. And just like you, Manakar was thinking why he'd started this in the first place. However, he walked all the way down to the miller's house. And when he arrived there, the miller said, good morning, Manakar, what news today? He said, I was hoping that maybe you could give me the makings of a cake that I could give to the threshers so they could give me some straw. I'll feed it to the cows. They'll squeeze out some milk into a saucer, which I'll give to a cat. The cat will lap it up, jump onto the table, scrape the butter, pat the fully paw of the hound. The hound will up and chase the deer. The deer will jump into the river. The river will give me water. I'll use it to wet the wetting stone, sharpen the axe, cut a rod, make a gad, and hang one a car for eating my blackberries every one. Well, that's fine, said the miller, and I'm very happy to help. But if you're going to make a cake, you need water to bind the ingredients, you see. Now, if you go down to the river and bring me back a little bit of water using nothing but this holy sieve, I'll be very happy to oblige. A sieve, said Manakar. Well, what use is that? For there were more holes in it than there was metal. But anyway, he tried his best. He went all the way down to the river bank and he bent down low and he pulled out water. But every ounce of water that was in the sieve fell back into the river. And he was just about to give up when suddenly across the sky flew his friend the crow and the crow cried dob dob a blessing on you cousin crow he said and he put his hand down into the river and he pulled out thick clay and he lined that sieve and he picked up water and he took it back to the miller and the miller gave him the makings of the cake, which he took to the thresher, who gave him some straw, which he took back to the cows, and they chewed it slowly. Through their four stomachs it went until it came out as white creamy milk into the saucer. The saucer was put in front of the cat, who took his time, as cats do. And then eventually, after a stretch, he jumped onto the table. He stretched out his claw and he scraped the butter, with which he packed the poorly paw of the hound. Well, the hound, he yelped, and off he went through the forest, chasing the deer. Who escaping the jaws of the deer at the final moment jumped up in the air and landed in the river. The river it chucked up water which he caught and very carefully so as not to drop a single drop. He carried it back to the wetting stone where he could sharpen his axe. He went and cut the rod. He made the guard and got back to the place where revenge would be had. But when he got there, Munaka had eaten so many blackberries. 
he'd popped. And that, dear friends, is the end of that story. Give yourselves a round of applause for listening so well. Hooray! <laughs> Woo! Whoa! God, you have got a sweat on. And this little guy, this, this little family down here, we're going on adventure family. You're making me hungry. What, can, we, can, we, can we hear them? Colette's family there. What, what are you having for your dinner? What? Um, bogey, broccoli, asparagus, and. Um, bogey's bogey's and... on toast. <laughs> bogey's yeah. on toast. No. What are you no. said bogey's on toast? I heard you. Asparagus, broccoli, potatoes, and biscuits. Asparagus? <laughs> oh, you, where, where are you in? Are you in Oldham, the posh end? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Shall we have another story? Yeah. All right then. Okay. Well, listen. I, I, I was. I thought I was looking around the boat for something to tell you a story about. And uh, we've got all sorts of things on this boat. And uh, and I, I, I was sat. I'm sat by the fire actually. And uh, I shouldn't be sat by the fire. It's so warm. But uh, anyway, I was sat by the fire and I noticed uh, a pair of these. And I thought I'd show you them. Here they are. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? These are my, uh, oh, I say they're mine. They're not mine, actually. This is a pair of bellows that live on our boat. And here they are. And if you've not seen bellows before, they kind of do that. If you put a pair, if you put something that made a sound on the end of it, you could use them as bagpipes. But um, this is a pair of bellows that used to belong to my wife's grandma. And uh, so that makes them quite old. Uh, and uh, I had the pleasure of having to fix these bellows not so long ago. So I know a little bit about bellows. So I thought I'd tell you a little story about a set of bellows, if you, if you like. Would you like a little story about bellows? Cool. Well, before I tell you the story, I should tell you a little bit about the anatomy of bellows, just in case you, you don't know much about bellows. This bit here, here, this bit, this is called, this is the, the, the handles of the bellows. That's probably pretty obvious, the bellows handles. This bit here. This is the belly of the bellows or, or the body of the bellows. This bit here, this is the neck. And this bit, the whole bit there where the wind comes out is a little bit like what's on your face. And you can make some bellows yourself, if you like, by sticking out your, your mouth like you're going to give somebody a big snog. <laughs> Go on, let's see your snog face. Come on, Dave. Here you go. And then you puff out your cheeks like that. And then you do a big raspberry like that. <laughs> And how many people have got spit all over the screen now? I have. And this bit, which is the most important bit of the bellows, here, this bag bit here, and it's got a hole here. This is called the lung of the bellows. And it, it works a little bit like your body does. It takes in air and it sends the air out. And what you're using for, if you've never used them, I'm sure there's some experts in the room who have them. Has anybody here got bellows in their houses? Dave, as well, you guys down there, have you guys up there have? Or the Bridgins don't have any bellows or oh, poor Bridgins. It's all right. They've got Gary and he's full of gas, as we know, Doug. Um, bellows are for getting your fire going. Uh, when, you, when your fire's not going, you puff them on the fire and the fire gets going. And I heard this old story a long time ago from my old friend. He's not around anymore. A man called Duncan Williamson, who was a, he was a traveling man from Scotland. And he told this story. And it's a lovely little story. I hope you enjoy it. Now, you guys that are in bed, there's a good danger that this might send you off to sleep. All right. Because it's proper bedtime story, this one. So, oh, that's a good thing, is it, Dad? Yes, that's a good thing. Sending off the kids to sleep. So I'm doing my job here. All right. OK. <clears throat> this is an old Jack tale. And it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a boy called Jack. Now, at this time in his life, he made his living. He made money by making and fixing bellows for people. And at the back of the house where he shared with his old mum, he had a little workshop. And every single day, people would bring their old bellows to him if they were broken and not working, and he would fix them up. And I know a little bit about fixing bellows, which I'll tell you about in a second. 
Well, one day, well, I'll tell you about Jack, actually. I should tell you that Jack had learned how to make bellows and fix bellows from his dad. And his dad had learned it from his dad. And his dad had learned it from his dad. So it was right inside their bones was fixing bellows, you see. And Jack was pretty good at it. And he was very proud of his work. Well, one day, Jack's working away at the back of his workshop. And his mum's in the kitchen making some dinner. When suddenly, there's a knock on the door. And Jack's mum goes to the door and opens it up. And there on the doorstep is an old creature of a woman. She's quite small and she's bent and weathered. She's got a hooked nose and a hooked chin and an old black cloak from the top of her head all the way down to her feet. And she's carrying under an arm a bundle wrapped in cloth, you see. And the old lady says, is this the house that Jack lives in? And she said, well, it is. Yeah, he's working in his workshop at the moment. And the old creature of a woman says, well, I'd like to speak to Jack. Well, Jack's mum runs off into the workshop and with a hushed voice, she says, Jack, Jack, you'll never guess. But on the doorstep right now, there's the old witch that lives at the top of Blow Away Hill. Now, if you've never been to Blow Away Hill, it's called Blow Away Hill. This might surprise you when I tell you, because the wind blows really strong at the top of it, you see. And Jack says, the old witch that lives at the top of Blow Away Hill. There's no witch that lives at the top of Blow Away Hill. There's an old woman that lives there, but she's no witch. You see, witch, you know, Jack didn't believe in witches. He wasn't a superstitious man, you see. She said, it's the old witch, I'm telling you, and she wants to speak to you. So Jack puts down his tools and he goes through the house and he goes to the door and he greets the old woman. He wel welcomes her inside. And the old woman says, Jack, I've heard tell that you're the best bellow maker and bellow fixer in all the land. Is it true? Jack looked, Jack looked at the old woman and he said, listen, I learned my trade from my father and his from his father and his from his father. So it's right inside my bones it is. And I'm very proud of me work. What would you like me to do? And she took out the bundle from under her arm and she put it down onto the table and she unraveled it. And inside there was a pair of bellows. But these were the strangest bellows that Jack had ever seen. The handles of the bellows weren't like my bellows here that are nice and plain and simple. They were the feet of an eagle. The body of the bellows was the body of a hog or a pig. The neck and the mouth were the shape of a cat's head. And Jack thought, well, those are the most curious bellows I've ever seen. But when he looked at them, he could see they were all tarnished and the leather was all broken and lots of the nails were all missing. She said, Jack, these are very special bellows and I want you to fix them for me. And if you fix them well and bring them up to my house in a week's time, I'll pay you handsomely. Well, Jack took the job on and the old lady went away. And Jack went into the workshop and he set two. And he took out all the brass nails that are around the side. I don't know if you can see that. There's lots of brass nails. Can you see mine? Some of mine are old tatty nails that I had to borrow from the garden fence, you see. And the garden fence is now falling over. And he had to take them all out. And then he had to strip all the leather out and get new leather and put it inside and cut it to shape. And he worked and he worked and he worked. And eventually he had it all shiny and new. And those bellows looked like brand new and they were beautiful. They shone like a new penny. But there's something about working away at something. When you work away at something and you do your best, you start to you start to fall in love with it. It's a little bit like a story, you see. When you tell stories for a while, after a while they become like best friends. They become you start to love those stories. So that when you tell them, you tell them as best you can, you see. Well, Jack had worked away at those bellows as best as he could. And by the time he'd finished with them, do you know he kind of fell in love with those bellows? Can you imagine falling in love with a pair of bellows? Well, the day came for Jack to take the bellows back to the old lady and he wrapped them in a piece of cloth and he put them under his oxen, under his arm there and he set off walking. Now it was quite a journey to get all the way to Blow Away Hill and the climb, well it took him almost half a day to get to the very top. When he got to the top it was blowing a gill, that being Blow Away Hill you see. But he went to the door and he knocked and the old creature, a woman, she came to him and she opened the door with both hands holding on to the door because the wind was trying to whip it off the hinges and eventually Jack was welcomed inside. She said, Jack, have you fixed the bellows? He said, I have, and I've worked hard at them. And he took them out from under his arm and he unwrapped them and they shone like a new penny. And she was so happy. She said, Jack, you can see you've worked hard on them and you deserve payment. 
Now you name your price, Jack. What do you want for fixing the bellows? And Jackie looked at those bellows and you know, it almost broke his heart to let them go. And he said, listen, I've worked so hard at those bellows. The one thing I want is the bellows themselves. You see, I love those bellows and I don't want to be parted with them. But the old woman, she looked at Jack and she felt really sorry for him. She said, Jack, I can't let you have these bellows, I'm afraid. They're very special to me. And the reason they're special to me, Jack, is because they're magic bellows. He said, magic bellows? Well, I've never heard of magic bellows before. How do they work? She said, well, it's very simple magic, Jack. All you have to do is you take the bellows and you put them into the grate and you say the magic words. And these are the magic words, you see, because I know them myself. You say, blow, bellows, blow. Shall we all say that together? Are you ready? After three. A one, two, three. Blow, bellows, blow. It's a great delay on it. It's fantastic. <laughs> the moment they said blow, bellows, blow, the bellows started to work all by themselves. And Jack couldn't believe it. But for too long, that fire, it was glowing merrily. Stop them. All you have to do, and you can probably work this out yourself, you say, stop, bellows, stop. Shall we try that one? Are you ready? After three. A one, two, three. Three. Stop. 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 Slowly, the bellows came to rest, you see. But as soon as Jack saw that, he thought, well, those are even more special. Oh, please, old lady, would you let me have the bellows? She said, look, I can't let you have the bellows, Jack. They're magic bellows. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I've got a set of bellows in the back that look exactly the same. You can have them, but there's no magic inside, you see. And she set off into the back of the house. And a few minutes later, she came back with a pair of bellows that looked almost the same, you see. But Jack, well, he wasn't appeased. And he looked at the old lady and he said, listen, would you please just put a little bit of magic inside those bellows for me? And she felt really sorry for Jack. He'd worked so hard. She said, I'll tell you what, a little bit of magic, Jack, but you can't tell anybody now how many people here think that jack did tell somebody go on put your hand up if you think he did yeah that's that's quite a consensus there yeah 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 well she was just about to make magic on the bellows when suddenly there was a knock on the door and the old lady went to the door and opened up the door now you're not going to believe me when i tell you this but on the doorstep was the great north wind himself now put your hand up if you've ever met the great north wind Oh, a few people have met the Great North Wind. Well, those people will know exactly what I know, which is that the Great North Wind likes to play tricks on people, doesn't it? Especially when you're wearing your kilt going down the high street to a posh do, and you're very traditional like me and like to wear your kilt in the traditional way. The Great North Wind always knows when you've got no underpants on, you see, and likes to blow your kilt up in the air so everybody can see that you haven't had a wash. Well... The Great North Wind came in and the old lady said, now then, Jack, you're going to have to go away because the Great North Wind's come for his cup of tea. And the Great North Wind said, well, what's going on here? And she said, well, I was just about to put some magic on those bellows for Jack, but I haven't got the time to do it. Ah, oh, says the Great North Wind, why don't you let me do it? Well, the Great North Wind picked up the bellows and he blew some magic inside. <gasps> But the Great North Wind didn't stop there, you see. He blew a second time. <gasps> but you know, three is the magic number inside stories. And so he blew the bellows one last time. You're going to have to help me out here. These bellows are really hard to blow. Are you ready? After three. One, two, three. <gasps> In fact, he blew so much magic inside those bellows, it could only lead to trouble. Well, Jack picked up the bellows, he put them under his arm, he thanked the old lady and he ran all the way home. And of course, when he got there, his mum was there and said, Jack, did you get paid? He said, I did. I got these bellows, mum. But I need to tell you something about these bellows, but you can't tell anybody. They're magic bellows, you see. I told you Jack would have told somebody, didn't I? Well, you know what mums are like, don't you? And I bet your mum's just like my mum. Now, where I come from in Yorkshire, we call it Callin. My mum can't stop Callin which means telling people secrets. Is your mum the same? Alfie, does your mum tell secrets? 
pretty no. good. No. Oh. Hands up if your mum likes to spread secrets. Yeah, I thought so. I collect, we've caught you out. Well, Jack's mum told a friend and a friend told a friend and a friend told another friend until eventually the rumour of the magic bellows was all around the town. In fact, it came to the ears of the king. Now, you know what kings are like. They want everything, you see. And when he heard about magic bellows, he called for Jack to be brought to the castle. Well, Jack, he was taken by the guards up to the castle with the magic bellows under his arm, you see. And when he arrived there, the king says, now then, Jack, I've heard you've a pair of magic bellows. Is that true? And Jack said, well, I have. Yeah, I've got them here. But, I, you know, I don't know how you've found out about them. He said, well, Jack, I want you to show me how they work. Well, it's simple, he said. What you do is you take them to the grate and you put them next to the fire and you say the magic words. Do you remember the magic words? So we say them together. Are you ready? After three, one, two, three. Blow. 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 And suddenly, the, the king, he couldn't believe his eyes as the bellows started fire. And the fire got hotter and hotter and hotter and merrier and merrier and merrier until eventually it was blazing. And the king said, that's great, Jack, but how do you stop them? And Jack said, well, that's easy. You just have to say the second set of magic words. Are you ready? After three. Oh, yeah. A one, two, three. Stop. Stop. Oh, do you think the bellows stopped? No. no, no, because the great north wind had played his trick and the bellows got faster and faster and faster. In fact, they got so strong, the wind from the mouth of the bellows blew up the chimney and he went out the top of the chimney and he went over and it landed on top of a barn and set it on fire. But the oh. bellows hadn't stopped there. They whisked round and started to blow the chairs around the room inside the castle. Well, the king, he shrieked, ah! when the table jumped up off the ground and went through the stained glass window and landed on the top of the pub. And everybody was very sad when the pub shut, you see. But he hadn't stopped there. The bellows continued to blow. And they, they blew the king's clothes off. And he stood there in the nudie. I know. But it didn't stop there. The bellows blew harder and harder until brick by brick it took the castle down. And then it went off around the town, blowing harder and harder. Cows up into the air. Carts tumbled down the road. Houses started to fall. And the king was furious and he shouted, Jack! But they couldn't find him anywhere because Jack had scarpered. And he was running as hard as he could. And he ran all the way to Blow Away Hill. He ran all the way up to the top and he hit upon the door. Well, the old creature came to the door and Jack told the story. Well, she didn't even stop. That old lady, she went round the side of the house and she jumped on her magic broom, because of course she was a witch, and whoosh, up into the air she flew. And she flew all the way down into the town. And when she arrived there, she saw the bellows running amok. Well, of course, she was a powerful witch. And when she shouted the words, are you ready? After three, one, two, three. Stop! 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 The bellows slowly came to rest. But the, the old lady, she, now listen here, King. Don't blame Jack. It's, it's not his fault. I'll show you whose fault it is. And she jumped on a broom. She shot into the air and like, well, faster than the wind. She caught up with the great north wind himself and she caught him by his beard. And she dragged him all the way down in front of the king. And the king was furious with the great north wind and said, great north wind, because of your trick today, you almost got Jack in trouble and you've, you've knocked my, my city down and my castle and my clothes. So I'm stood here in the nuddy. Now I want you to put right what you've done wrong. Well, that's what the great north wind did. He put the city back together again. He rebuilt the castle and he brought the king's clothes back. And the king stood looking stern at the great north wind and said, now, listen here, great north wind. I think you should pay a higher price for that. Some days, like today, it gets very hot. So my brow gets warm and sweaty. And kings, you know, they shouldn't look sweaty in front of their subjects. So from now on, when I make my special whistle, I want you to come down 
and blow a nice breeze across my forehead to keep me cool. And that's how it's been since then. And you know what? I met that king and uh, he taught me the magic whistle. Now, would you like to learn the magic whistle that brings the north wind to bring a breeze when you're hot? I'm getting some thumbs up here. All right. Well, let's unmute, unmute you for a second so we can hear you. Can we hear you? All right. So the so the, the magic whistle goes like this. Now, I don't know if you can see out your windows at the moment, but I'll tell you what. I'll, let me open my door up and I'll see if it works outside my, my boat when I whistle. The magic whistle goes like this. OK, it goes like this. It goes. Can you do that? Should we try that? Do you want to do, 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 do one more time? Well, let's see. You have to try one, two, three. It's like the dawn chorus. It's beautiful. I'm going to try it out the door and see if the north wind comes down. Hang on a second. Is it working? Working. See, the door slams shut. It's like by magic. The great north wind has joined us. So from now on, my friends, if you're ever out in the hot, hot sun, you'll know how to cool down. And that is the end of that little story. Give yourselves a round of applause. Shall we have another one? Yeah. All right. Then. Let's get rid of you then, so I can't hear you. A little stick. People here, let's have a little show of hands. How many people here, when the stories are over, how many people here is, is, it, is it your bedtime? How many people are going straight off to bed? Uh, one, two, Sue's going straight off to bed. Dave, are you not going to bed? Not yet. Oh, you're going to bed as well. Gary, is it your bedtime? It's not, not yet. A little bit later. Well, I'll tell you what, how about... Uh, you're going, at, you're going at nine, Gary. Oh, Gary's going at nine. There you go. I was thinking about this little story because it's a nice little uh, a nice little bedtime story for you. And I can see there's quite a lot of young ones here, so it would be nice to have a little bedtime story. Do you fancy a little bedtime story? It's a magical little story. And I haven't told it for uh, very much, and I haven't told it for very long. Uh, so you'll have to forgive me slightly. <clears throat> and uh, the story goes uh, a little bit like this. It might surprise you to know that once upon a time, a very long time ago, unlike today, there was no sun in the sky. And that meant it was always dark and it was always cold. Now, if you, I don't know if you can work out what it means if it's always dark, but I can tell you, it means that people, when they were walking around, they kept bumping into each other, you see, and bumping into walls. And, well, Pretty soon, people had bru bruised noses and bruised shoulders and bruised knees. But it was worse than that because there was no sun. It was incredibly cold. Now, it's all right if you've got, a, you've got fur all over your body like an animal. But us people, we don't have fur, you see. All we can do when it's cold is light the fire and put some clothes on, you see. But it didn't matter how big the coats were that people wore. People were still really, really cold. Now, this story is a really old story. And it goes back to a time when animals and people were still really good friends, you see. Animals weren't scared of people back then. And the animals gathered together one day and they said, listen, our brothers and sisters, our cousins, the humans, they're freezing. And they've all got bruised noses because they keep bumping into things, you see. And if we let this go on too long, well, things are going to turn pretty bad for our friends. Is there a way that we can help them? And all the animals got together and they scratched their heads until eventually there was a great big rumbling voice. And that voice belonged to the bear. And the bear said, I've heard of this thing. And it's way, 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 way on the other side of the world. It's called the sun. And apparently it's really big and it's really hot. And it's really bright. Now, I reckon if we could go and find the sun and we could bring it all the way back here, 
our cousins, our brothers and sisters, the humans, won't be cold and they won't bump into things anymore. Well, the animals all agreed that this was a great idea, but they said, well, listen, how are we going to get our hands on the sun? And the bear said, well, I've been thinking about that. And I think the best way to do it is nick it. We'll just steal it. That's the way we do it. Well, the animals all scratched their heads again and said, well, who amongst us is clever enough, wily enough, light on their feet to steal the sun? Well, it all went quite quiet until eventually one plucky animal volunteered. And that was Mr. Fox. Now, Mr. Fox, has got a bit of a bad name these days, but you know, Mr. Fox, he's a wily character. He's light on his feet and he's cunning. Mr. Fox says, I will have a go. Now, Mr. Fox, he was light on his feet. He shot off like an arrow across the world until eventually he sniffed it out. He sniffed out the sun and he could see how beautiful it was. But he scratched his head again. He thought, well, how am I going to get the sun round the other side of the world? Well, he sat for a while and he waited for the right moment. And when people's backs were turned, he darted in and he used his mouth. He picked up the sun in his mouth and he shot off back to his friends. Now, you might not know this, and I know you look like a clever bunch, all right? But the sun is really, really hot. Did you know that? In fact, it burns at 15 million degrees. And I don't know if you can work out what you think might have happened to the fox's mouth when he had the sun inside it. Well, of course, it burnt him. And he spat the sun down on the ground. And, you know, to this very day, if you were to find yourself a fox and he was to open up his mouth so you could look inside, you'll see that to this very day, all the mouths of foxes are black inside, singed by the heat of the sun, you see. Well, the fox went back to the other animals and he had to admit that he'd, he'd failed the task, you see. So they all scratched their heads again and said, right, who else is going to have a go? And eventually... The possum came forward and said, listen, I'll have a go. And so the possum set off and he went all the way across the land until he came to the place where the fox had dropped the sun. Now, he'd heard how fox had burnt his mouth, so he decided to use something else. He didn't use his mouth. He picked up the sun on his tail. Now, back in those days, the possum had fur all over his tail, you see, and he picked it up on the very end and he set off walking towards his friends. Now. You do look like an intelligent group of people, but you probably don't know this, but the sun is really, really hot. Did you know that? It burns at 15 million degrees. And in fact, well, you could probably work it out for yourself. What do you think happened to his beautiful tail? It burned all the fur off his tail. And when he dropped it down on the ground and ran away, you see, he looked back to see what had happened to his tail. And to this day, my friends, if you find yourself a possum, have a look at his tail. There's no fur on it anymore, all because he tried to carry the sun. Well, the possum came back and had to admit that he, he couldn't bring, bring the sun back. And so they scratched their heads again and wondered who could possibly bring the sun. Well, none of the animals volunteered. Until eventually they listened. And they could hear the tiniest of sound. And as they all creamed in to listen really carefully, they could hear the tiniest little voice saying, I'll have a go. I'll have a go. Well, they looked around to try and find which animal was speaking. The crowd parted and there on the ground was Grandmother Spider. Well, Grandmother Spider was so tiny that the animals all laughed. They said, how are you possibly going to carry the sun back? She said, I'll try. And she scurried off on her eight legs. And she went all the way down to where the possum dropped the sun on the ground. Well, she didn't carry it in her mouth. She had no tail to carry it on, but she had something stronger. Grandmother Spider had a web. And the web is one of the strongest things in the world. And she spun that web all the way around the sun. And she dragged it all the way back to her friends. And suddenly there was the sun shining and hot. But suddenly they had a, another problem. The sun was so close to them that it was so bright and it was so hot that they started to burn. And that's when Bear spoke again. He said, the sun doesn't belong on the ground. It belongs in the sky. But who's going to put it there? 
Well, of course, along came Buzzard. And Buzzard said, I'll take my son up into the sky. But he didn't carry it in his mouth. He didn't carry it on his tail. And he had no web to spin. But what he did do was carry it up on top of his head. And he flew and he flew and he flew until he flew so high the sun stayed in the sky. But of course, well, you probably don't know this yourselves, but it's true. The sun is really, really, really hot. In fact, it burns at 15 million degrees. And I'm sure you could probably work out what happened to the feathers upon his head. It burnt them. And the buzzard to this day has flew around in the sky with no feathers on his head. But he still loves the sun, which is why sometimes when you look up in the sky, you'll see the buzzard flying around and around. And the sun, a little bit like a web, sends its heat and its light down on Earth. And everybody is saved from the heat, from the light, from the life that the sun gives us. And you might be wondering who the hero of this story is. Maybe it's the spider. Maybe it's the fox or the possum or the buzzard, but it isn't. It's the bear, because without his idea, nobody would have found the sun. And, you know, that means that the bear, well, as a hero, he belongs in the stars. And to this very day, you can still see the great bear hanging up there amongst the stars. So that you might, when you look up and you see the great bear, you can remember this story. And that, dear friends, is the end of that little tale. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Hurrah! I'm just looking at the time, and I've just realised we've been going on now for 47 minutes. Can you believe how quickly time flies? So I'm thinking to myself, have, have you got the ears for one last one? And I, I, I'll tell you what I was thinking, all right? Would you like a, a story or would you like to do a song together? Would you like to do a song? Story! Oh, a story. Right. Put your, put your hand up if you want a story. Story! Yes, you want a story. Put your hand up if you want a song. Hey. So there's just Gary that wants a song. I'll tell you what, Gary, next time I see you, I'll, I'll, later on tonight, I'll, t I'll sing the song just for you, all right? My little private message for you. Well, I've won my... Would you like a, uh, I don't go anymore. So apparently Joe Hardy doesn't go anymore. I don't know why she doesn't go anymore, but she doesn't go anymore. A little message just came up to say she doesn't go anymore. What could that mean? I do not know. But anyway. <laughs> so I thought I would tell you uh, 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 that's this last little story. And do you, want, do you want to try and do something we can join in with? Should we try and do something? Can we, can we get everybody, uh, everybody mic'd up? Hello. Look. All right. This, uh, this no. This just shape. woke up. No. Oh, thanks, Michelle. That's, what are you doing with that paper? No. Don't eat the paper, child. Don't eat the paper. <laughs> okay. For this story, I want to the last story. No. What you need is you need your hands like this. Have you got your hands like this? Um, <laughs> All right. Now we're only pretending. All right, but what you need to do is you're going to spit on your hands. Don't do it for real, but we go like this. We go, just pretend. Right? And then we clap our hands together like this. We give them a rub. And we stretch out and we take hold of the cow's tail. And then, and then we're going to all try and say these words together. We're going to say, they cut and they twisted and they pulled. Can we say them together? We're going to say, they took oh. and they twisted oh. and they pulled. Oh. Well done. Right, let's have a little rehearsal of all that. Are you ready? Hands in the air. Hey, hands in the air. Are we ready? Hands in the air. After three. One, two, three. Let's out and take the cow's tail. What did we say? We said they and they Right. Here's the story. Once upon a time, my old friend Farmer Merriweather. What's his name? Farmer Merriweather. 
Dad. He woke up one morning, he Mommy. looked out the window, and he realised it had been raining and raining and raining. What had it been doing? Raining, 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 raining. And suddenly, he had a bit of a fright. He went, oh! What did he do? He went, oh! Because he realised he'd left Lazy Cow in the field. Well, he pulled on his wellies. Go on, pull on your wellies. Pull on your wellies. There we go. There we go. And Farmer Merriweather went and had a scloop in the mud. Now, if you've never scooped in the mud, you have to do the sound effect. It goes like this. It goes. <laughs> One of a scoop. <laughs> well, he looked down the field. And he could say, Go on, have a look down the field, quick. Have a look down the field. He looked down to the bottom of the field. And he saw something swishing around in the field. And he realised it was Daisy. And he ran down to Daisy. And he could see that it had rained so much that the green field had turned to thick, gloopy mud. And Daisy had sunk in the mud. And all you could see was Daisy's bonds and Daisy's bum and her tail sticking out. <laughs> and Farmer Merriweather thought, right, I better pull Daisy out of the mud. So, are you ready? Have you got your hands? Are we ready? All in together. We go. What do we do? We go. Pull the Daisy's tail and he... Oh, as hard as he pulled, he couldn't get Daisy out of the mud. Oh no! And do you know what Daisy said? Daisy said, Ooh. "That's what cows say." You see, <laughs> farmer man that was going to go and make a cup of tea when suddenly he noticed there was a sound coming down the village. The sound went like this: ring, ring. Ring, ring. What sound was it? Ring, 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 ring. That's the sound of the bell on the handlebars of Billy the Butcher's bike. And Billy the Butcher, he jumped over the fence and he scooped in the mud. Go on, have a scoop. Well, Billy the Butcher got hold of Farmer Merriweather. Farmer Merriweather, what did he do? Have you got your hands? Yes. He got all the daisy's tail and together what did he do? They pulled as they pulled. But as hard as they pulled, they still couldn't get Daisy out. Of the you know what Daisy said? Daisy said. <laughs> That's what cows say, you see. Well, wasn't sure what to do when suddenly they heard a sound and the sound went like this. It went honk honk. Well, that was the sound of the horns on the handlebars of the scooter of Betty Bun the Baker. <laughs> Betty Bun the Baker jumped over the fence and she scooped in the mud. Go and have a scoop. <laughs> so Betty Bun the Baker got hold of Billy the Butcher and Billy the Butcher got hold of Farmer Merriweather. And what did Farmer Merriweather do? Can you remember? He went. <laughs> so all the Daisy's tail and together they. But they still couldn't get Daisy out of the mud. Poor Daisy. And do you know what Daisy said? How <laughs> <laughs> say <laughs> Well, they were about to give up when suddenly they heard a sound. He went like this. He went, aha! Uh-huh. What sound did it make? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that was the sound of the horn inside the van that belonged to Patricia, the postmistress. And Patricia was coming down the road. She handbrake turned the van. She got out and jumped over the fence and she scooped in the mud. Go and have a scoop. <laughs> Patricia, the postmistress, Took hold of Betty Bun the Baker. Betty Bun the Baker took hold of Billy the Butcher. Billy the Butcher took hold of Farmer Merriweather. What did Farmer Merriweather do? You remember? What did he do? He went. <laughs> took hold of Daisy Tail and together, what did they do? They. But they still couldn't get Daisy out of the mud. What did Daisy say? 
while they were wondering what to do, when suddenly, round the corner, there came a very helpful mum and a very helpful dad. And we all need a very helpful mum and a helpful dad every now and then, you see. And they could see the predicament in the field. Yeah. So they opened the gate rather than climbing over it. And they went round the edge of the field so they wouldn't get their feet uh, dirty, you see. Now, the very helpful mum, because she was the stronger of the pair, got a good stronghold of the dad. Now, the very helpful dad, who thought his luck was in, got a good stronghold of uh, Patricia, the postmistress. And Patricia, the postmistress, who was quite happy about it, she got hold of uh, Betty Bun the baker. And Betty Bun the baker got hold of Billy the butcher. And Billy the butcher got hold of Farmer Merriweather. Last time, here we go. What did they do? Are you ready? All in. They went. <laughs> Chop all the his tail and together they When suddenly there was a snap and everybody tumbled in the mud. Go on, have a tumble. Tumble, tumble. Oh. Well, eventually they stood up and they looked at Farmer Merriweather and they could see that Farmer Merriweather still had Daisy's tail in his hand. Uh-oh. The problem was, Daisy's tail wasn't stuck on Daisy anymore. Because they'd all pulled so hard, her tail had snapped off. <laughs> and she was still stuck in the mud. But I'll leave you, my friends, with this thought. If Daisy's tail had been that little bit stronger, my tail would have been a lot, lot longer. <laughs> So let's give thanks to weak cow's tails. And do you know what Daisy said? Mm -hmm. Give yourselves a round of applause! Give yourselves a round of applause. Gentlemen, boys and girls, that's about enough of my stories now because it's we've been going on for nearly an hour. I'm sure Brilliant. you're tails at this moment in time. So um, I think we're going to end the story there. Thank you no. very much for joining us. I've got no idea how many of the other are. I, I no. can't tell if this is the group or there's more people. But um, listen, do us a favour, don't disappear. Uh, I think there's a little chat session if people want to talk and, and, and ask questions and whatnot. <laughs> if you don't and you're saying goodbye, don't, don't think this is the end of the Storytelling Cafe. Because... Um, if you go on the website on the Storytelling Cafe and go on stories, there's a whole list of storytellers. Some of them are with us right now, actually. I can see Dave's here. Mr. Bridgins is up there on the top there. They've all got stories on there. So if you like stories, the website is full of them. And there's more coming up every single day. And uh, so do visit and, uh, and see people. Okay. And also on the website, if you haven't already, there is a little hat symbol. And the little hat symbol is where if you want to and you think the stories were worth it and you can but afford it, you can put uh, a little bit of a tip inside the uh, inside. Foot. And what that will mean is, because I'm such a poor storyteller, I've got holes in my shoes, look. <laughs> I'll be able to buy myself a brand new pair of Pumas. <laughs> Pumas are the coolest pant uh, tr uh, shoes in, in town. So if you fancy putting a tip in there, that would be great. As far as I know, this video is will of stories will go onto the website. Is that true? I'm being so, uh, maybe, I'm a, I'm a right in saying that. Yes, I'm being told. That, so if you want to listen to them again, that would be great. But anyway, I'm going to shut up now. And uh, all I can say is thank you very much for joining me. Stay safe. And hopefully we'll see each other around a fire very, very soon. Well done, everybody. Well done. Thank you. 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 Hello. Hello, Ian. I've got to just soak up. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know what we've got? Bye. Look over here. Bye. Bye. Hang on. We've got a stack of them. Yay! There's some more people. They're in bed. How does, how does this chat work then? We talk to each other. We talk to each other. <laughs> 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 Thank you.
Who's got something important to say? I'm having me tea. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 No, I'm having fish and chips. It's very nice. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Oh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I feel really bad if he's disappearing. Hello. Hello, Sarah. Hey, Hello, Ian. Oh. Hello. 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 Hey, Ian. Do you, have have the the Do you have some gas tape? Do you have some gas tape to prepare the tail? <laughs> I have actually. I've got some grey, grey oh, gaffer tape over there. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, oh. I'm I'm posh and the dog deserves it. <laughs> it's a good story, that isn't it? Yeah. Where, are, where are people? By the way, where are people in the world? Where are you? Britain, England, Romania, <laughs> Romania, Morocco. Kendall. England, Marrakesh. Hello, Marrakesh. 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 Manchester. Manchester. Manchester Canal. Manchester. 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 Is that Dieter? Yeah. it's me. Oh, you small <laughs> people. Hello. Ah, oh, look at that. Marcella, Carla. Hello, Carla. Hello, Tim. Hi. Hello, Wonky Wado. <laughs> Chucked you a tenner. Lovely Hello, to see you here, Abdu. Hi, Abdu. Hi. Hello, Hello everyone. Hello, Tim Phillips and family. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, look at you guys. Amazing. Were, were those stories all right for you? Amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Amazing. No, they weren't. No, they weren't, did you say? Who said yes, that? they were. Oh, yes, they were. I was going to say, I was going to, I'll have to carry, <laughs> carry on like that. I'll come and get you. <laughs> How many people are having lovely, are you having a lovely time on lockdown? Are you having a nice time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? What's the best thing you've done? Come on, let's have a round. What's, what's, come on, Carla, what have you been doing? Um, I'm not really sure. Lots of crafting. Have you, have you, yeah, been, lots of crafting. you been picking your nose? It's your birthday. Lots of crap oh, stuff. Right. Making games. It was your birthday. Happy birthday. Wow, happy birthday. How old were you? Making games. Eight. Eight. Big year. Big year is eight. I remember eight. eight. Eight was the year where I think it all started to make sense. Is it all starting to make sense to you? Bye, yeah. Sarah. Yeah, it's all making sense. Bye. My dinner's ready. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> your dinner's ready. <laughs> Bye, Sarah. And it, it's Bye. not the British Shores. Are you camping out? We're camping in the garden. Oh yeah. We're gonna uh, watch the shoot. We're gonna watch the shoot. Oh, oh, there's a meteor shower. It's a meteor shower, isn't it? It's supposed to be. Wow. Tonight. Where's the satellite? The lyrids. The lyrids meteor the shower. It's the light. The light. Oh, the lights that went to the sky. that light. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, that's I've been making games. It's quite hard to see you all because you're all on different screens. <laughs> Is that like uh, just an off making... star in our view? I must say, you're all very beautiful. <laughs> just in case, ah. you, in case you were worried, you're all gorgeous. Marcella's come onto this screen now. Hello, Marcella. I've, I've been making games. You've been making dens. Exciting. Who, who's, who's got the <laughs> scrumpy chat? <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how many people? Uh, how many people have been on to just so? Then, how many people do we know from just so? You guys have. You guys have. You guys have. You guys have. We know you. Uh, we know you from Soulfest. We know you Who from said that? Brayshaws. <laughs> oh, from Soulfest. I'm trying to see your faces. Many, uh... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. So you in Kendall? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody's showing their beers off. It's a big beer fest going on. I hope you're not feeding that to the kids. Yeah. Coming in. 
That's Joe. Joe's here. Hello, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hello. If you haven't met Joe, this is Joe, my wife. Hello, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hello, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, How are you? Not bad, thanks. Good. Can I? What? I'll tell you what. While while we're all here, right? This the, the we have to thank the backstage staff, the the guys that are doing all the backstage and the technical stuff of the World Storytelling Cafe. Uh, uh, I don't know whether whether we get much praise, but I think a round of applause for the people doing all the tech and stuff like that. Well done. It's uh, it's great to just be able to turn up, and not have to do anything, and have the competence. Because I'd, I'd have just muted myself through the whole thing. Uh, and uh, so thank you very much for sorting it all out. Is there, are there more, so just so people know, are there more of these live ones? Uh, yes. Uh, Pauline uh, Cordina is on next on live on Friday evening. Friday evening. Cool. Like, so if you're wanting more stuff, dudes, then you need to turn up Friday evening. There's more stories coming up uh, nice and live. Who's coming on Friday? Then? Dad. Yes. Yeah. Oh no, I'm not, your, I'm not your dad. Talking. Who's talking? <laughs> <laughs> now, can I just ask the children, just for a second, just the children, right? Are, are you are you behaving yourselves? Yeah. 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 Are you being yeah. are, you, are you being nice to your mums and dads? Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, there's yeah, something bad. Because I'll be checking, and if you're not, when I see you, when I see you at a festival, I'll, 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 give, I'll give you my finger like this. Bye. I'll you. Are you going? Bye. Bye, darling. Bye, Bye Michelle. Bye, Michelle. Miss you. Oh. And the house, are the bridging's all right up there. You've muted yourselves. I can see. It won't work. Oh, the poor bridgings. Uh, yeah. Oh, there they are. That's the longest time I've ever been quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and are you going to do a live? Did you catch? Did Did everybody catch Mr. Bridgings' set? I did. It was very good. Did. Yeah, loved it. it was I really enjoyed it. <laughs> are we going to have a live set from Mr. Bridgings at some point? I'm asking. I think uh, Mike will be able to answer that one. Uh, John Rose, your man, but uh, that would be oh. fantastic. I'll, I'll uh, pull a few strings, Mr. Douglas. Uh, love, lo love Mr. Bridgen's set. Can you get Dolly in the room, though? Uh, no, I can do it with the garden, though, but the problem is there's so many motorbikes that keep going past my house. Uh, it always, it's <laughs> <laughs> And can I ask how how many are other people having their own little mini festivals in their gardens? The, 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 the Brayshaws seem to be heading heading the uh, heading up the the outdoor adventure yeah, uh, scheme at the moment. No. You guys are the Phillips family. No. Good, hands up if you've been camping. Who's been camping in the garden? In the garden. In the garden. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. Have you been camping? Sorry. Have you been camping? Have you? These guys have all been camping. Have you? No, I've never. No. Yeah. You have you got a no. garden? <laughs> sorry, I don't go a garden. No, sorry. Oh, you haven't got a garden. Well, maybe you could join the. You could join the Bray Shores. They'd be happy to have you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, look, Thank they're you. all nodding. <laughs> but a lovely place. Could you get a tent? <laughs> sorry. What about the roof terrace, Abdu? Could you put a tent up there? Uh. I'll try, okay. <laughs> you can get some camels. We can't get camels, you see. You could have real camels. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. you can't get a camel on the roof. <laughs> That's are, you, not you, are you in Marrakesh? I am in Marrakesh, yeah. Oh, man. Let's not go to Kendall. Let's all go to Marrakesh. Who's up for Marrakesh? After he's going to put us up, don't worry. We're all going to go and stay on his roof. <laughs> I'll try and make it down to the roof, yeah? Why not? Cool. How many people are coming? One, two, three, four. Uh, Philip's family come in. Five, six, seven, oh eight. Yeah, Bianca's okay. coming. Okay. Of course. Okay. My wife Jo's coming. Dita, are you coming? 
how many people you know? I don't think they made that. Just counting. How many people here are coming? Yeah, Everyone. Two, that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Great. Uh, uh, I think you need to make room for about 20 of us. Okay, welcome everyone. Yeah, we're well, there already. Yanka, you're on the roof in Marrakesh already. Yeah, I am. I'm at Red Spice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, come, how come you're on a roof? I am. <laughs> how have you done that? The virtual we... background. Can you show us wow. the last Magic. Very clever. Yeah. And look, look at Dave in his little caravan as well. I'm camping in my caravan. Look. Oh. oh. Nice. Just How very sweet. Oh. Is, that, is that your old caravan, Ian? No, man. No, it looks like it, though, doesn't it? It does a bit, eh? I, mine was, ours was pink. And it had bum cream written on the side. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> so they, you've got Marcellus on Mars. How are they doing this? This is like it's like witchcraft. <laughs> Amazing. Press on virtual background. Bye. Virtual background. Yeah. Who's going? Are you going? Oh, bye, darling. Bye, bye Carla. And I've also got two to soak up. I've got two. Now, what's great is one can go inside the other. Yeah, I like it. Oh. And what you've got to make sure, make sure you don't leave the washing up for other people, won't you? Thank you, Dory. Pleasure. Bye. See you to the brace shores. Enjoy the garden. Don't get eaten by squirrels. <laughs> we'll try not to. Thank Good. you, Ian. And thank you, my darling. See you soon. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Phillips is going as well. See you, dudes. Oh, I can't that one. We're going to go. Mr. Tong's going. Are you off, Mr. Tong? Are you saying goodbye? Hey. I thought you were going go now. He's getting rid of you, Dave. I, I know he wants me to go now because he wants to I talk don't... about me. That's yeah, not what I said. So I've got That's to go and get me afters anyway. So <laughs> oh, yeah, what happened pudding? to your afters? Yeah. Hmm? What's your pudding, Dave? Do you know, it's going to be... Um, I haven't made it yet. <laughs> I don't know. Some kind of sticky pudding. I'll yeah. see you all later. Goodbye. If I, if I drive past, can you throw some out the window? Yeah. I'll sling some at the side of the car. It'll stick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a question for you, Ian. Can you, yes. Yep. Was that more fun for you than one of the recorded stories? Yeah, it's great, actually. It's nice to... It feels like you... There's, the delay is quite. There's nothing you can do about the, the delays, but it, it, it doesn't affect the flow of it too much. And I think as long as you've got some narratives that are just spoken narratives that you're not asking for interaction, and some that are fun within with interaction, it's a nice blend of stuff. So it's great to see people's faces. It's just lovely to have in, even just being able to see see people in reaction. I think it just brings it to life. So yeah, it's loads more fun. So most of the time, Ian, I think you had about, I think there were 23 connections, but um, average at least two people. So, you know, between, what, 40 and 50 people online, which is an audience, you know? Yes, yes. Yeah, no, it's good. And, oh, and no, that's, that's in the room, so there'd be a lot more on the on watching on the website and the and the um, other live streams. Bye, Marcella. Bye. Take care. Bye. What's, Bye. What's really nice about it is being, I thought it was with Dave's show as well, it's just you feel like being part of an audience, or so for a brief moment, yeah. out, you feel like you're out and connected again, which is something we all miss. And when it's fabulous watching the stories online, but watching them together, you get that sense of community, which um, you don't get when you watch the telly or watch things that are recorded. I don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Sorry, dear. Yeah, I was just going to say I was watching you for a bit, and. Um... I hadn't realised I could connect with Zoom and be part of it in real time. I was just sort of watching you on the, the YouTube live thing and it said, and I connected, oh, oh, brilliant. And it feels so much better. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we could say that, you know, during the stories that the teller or the technician helping could just occasionally say, anybody who's watching, why don't you, you know, have to go to the website to do that. But, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tried to signpost everybody with the. I, I put quite a lot of adverts out today saying if you're going to connect, connect through the website. 
because then yeah. I, we can interact with each other. So yeah. who, who, who did? It was great. I, I didn't realize there were other, other screens of faces. I had kind of you get about nine people, don't you? I, I didn't realize there were there were all those until I heard Dieter's voice. Actually, it was Dieter's voice that I heard somewhere else. But don't get me wrong, though. The yeah. I enjoyed doing the recordings. It was a discipline that I enjoyed doing. So. Um, as much as the live thing is fantastic, it was. I have enjoyed sitting and having to kind of plot through and work through. There's so many things you get away with when you're doing it live in front of an audience. So you get away with the trip of the tongue and you could apologize and move backwards and forwards. But when you're recording it, it takes you that time to. Uh, uh, I don't know how many takes I did um, to get it absolutely right, you know, and, and 40, you know, 45 minutes without making what you think is a significant mistake with what you're doing it's quite i think it's you know it's quite a it's quite a thing to do so but so i've enjoyed it i've enjoyed both it but this is great i think it's uh, we, we we loved your recorded shows they were they were they were fantastic thank you good good i just i just wanted to say as well because i've done um i've done a few i've done pre-recorded live on facebook and live on zoom and there is something about that knowing that somebody's receiving the performance that you're doing, that it just makes a difference. Even if there's one person watching on YouTube, um, uh, whatever it might, uh, one person watching it live on Facebook, if somebody's watching it in the moment, it feels completely different yeah. to when you're sort of recording it on an iPad or a phone, just because you've got an audience in the moment that's receiving that story. And I've just, that's been really fascinating to sort of see how that feels. Yeah. But Zoom, I think, out of all of the different formats, Zoom is the one that is, you know, feels the most immediate, doesn't it? Because you can see your audience, you can have that interaction and everybody is sharing in that moment together and it, it's as oh, close yeah. as we can get to being in the room with each other. Yeah. 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 That's, that's great. Yeah. That's good. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. As long as other people have enjoyed it, I've enjoyed it. So great, great set. Well done. Yeah, good lovely. Set. Really enjoyed it. I haven't heard Monica and Manica for years. And I used, to tell it. I used to tell it after I'd heard it and I haven't told it for years and you've just reminded me of it and I just love that story. Thank you, Ian. I, love, I think it's, I think it's a, a great story and, and sometimes when I tell it, I kind of think, oh, I, when I first started telling that story, it was awful. The telling of it was terrible. And you could see audiences going, oh, God. Because you can't, you know what's coming. Or, or you know something's coming, you know, and especially children, that kind of repetition, it's on and on and on and on. And actually, the more, I've, the more it's sunk in, the more, I, actually, I don't really, I enjoy it as a, as a tale. And I think, well, that's, that's a, it's one of those for me tales. Yeah. And you can but, see no, it's great. you're telling it. Yeah. yeah. You can see that. Oh, you, no, like great. you said, you enjoy telling it. We enjoy hearing it because that enjoyment comes across, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Be a great one for you, Gary. Yeah, great. Yeah, uh, well, it's similar to the um, house that Jack built, actually. That was yeah. watching you yeah. going, oh, it's that similar fast patter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. The old woman and her, the old woman and her pig. I saw that yeah. was a uh, piggy jumping over yeah. the side. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well done, everybody. Great. Thank thanks, thanks, thanks for the thanks for the tech. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Thank, that you. Was wonderful. Thank you very much. Our second life performance. Awesome. Cool. Well done, everybody. Well, thank well, you. Well done. Bye, well, Bye everyone. We're going to go and drink gin. See you. You had some gin up those bellows. I know you did. Every time, <laughs> you blew, every time the north wind blew in those bellows, there's a little bit of gin coming out. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you worry. The outtakes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Catch you all later. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night.